Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Vax Pop. My name is Luke Henderson, and I'm the Program Manager here at The Circle, and it is my pleasure to welcome our audience today. I would like to begin by firstly acknowledging the traditional custodians of Australia and paying respect to their elders, past, present, and future, for they hold the memories, the culture, the traditions, and the hopes of Indigenous Australia. Over the past few weeks, The Circle has been spotlighting many top Australian and New Zealand business leaders supporting the vaccine rollout. These sessions form part of our series, Let's Get the Jab Done. And today we're very delighted to have another special guest, uh, Matthew Halliday from Ampol, the CEO and Managing Director. Thank you, Matthew, for your time today. Um, a reminder, we are on the record today and we welcome our attending media guests. This session will be recorded and shared later on our YouTube channel. You can view the recording there as well as other recordings from our series. I will now pass over to Cerise DeVoe, Profile and Director, sorry, excuse me, Director and Profile and Relationships here at The Circle to start our to session today. Thank you very much. Enjoy today. Thank you, Luke, and welcome back, Matt. It is a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. Good to be Let's here. Let's start with you. How are you doing? Yeah, really well, thanks. Uh, I'm sort of really encouraged actually uh, day, day by day to see uh, the vaccination uh, metrics in uh, Australia. Certainly uh, here in New South Wales are really starting to, uh, to lead the way and uh, looking forward to getting out of lockdown. <laughs> Definitely. I think we all are, at least for us in New South Wales. Looking back at the last 18 months, COVID has created unique challenges for everyone. What are the main considerations you had to take into account when planning a strategy and how have you approached the vaccine rollout? Yeah, so let me look on the vaccine rollout first. I think it's really, uh, I think we're in such a privileged position that we've got scientists around the world who are delivering to us the, the vaccines that we have uh, the opportunity to use. I think um, you know, last year, there was obviously a lot of uncertainty. This year, we've transitioned into a world where we actually can see the pathway out. Yes, there's still some uncertainty as to exactly how it plays out, but I think a lot more confidence that vaccines are such a critical part of our pathway back to um, a different form of normality, but, um, but normality to get sort of people moving around again, socialising again, certainly. Our approach has been to strongly encourage our employees uh, to get uh, vaccinated. That's important to keep our customers safe, to keep our own people safe, um, and together with uh, sort of some form of ongoing controls, I think um, that's uh, that's our pathway out. I think it's really great for um, I think society now to be able to see that pathway and have that confidence that um, we've got a way out. And I think the other important lesson for me during COVID is not to lose sight of the longer term as well. You have these, uh, you have these uh, major issues. This has been a very major global one, uh, but we can't lose sight of the long term either and, uh, and where we need to, uh, to take, our, uh, take ourselves, our business, our world over the long term. This is very inspiring. And talking about people, you just touched on it a little bit, but health and safety will clearly remain a key priority. What are you planning for your workforce force and customers and how do you keep service stations a safe environment? Yeah, so I think obviously been very focused on maintaining strong controls around hygiene, around cleanliness, around mask wearing. So those controls will all remain very important, uh, as well as strongly encouraging our people uh, to be uh, to be vaccinated. Obviously, uh, we're publicly very much strongly advocating for vaccination. Um, uh, but all of those controls together with vaccination are an important part of, uh, of how we see ourselves going forward. And we provide an essential service uh, to keep people moving. That's been critical to enable uh, sort of communities to keep operating, our customers to keep operating through this, uh, through the, the entire pandemic. And it's important that we keep doing that. And we really appreciate all the work that you do to keep the country moving. Are there any innovations that you are trying out that may guide others? that you can share with us? Well, I think uh, what, we're, what we're doing uh, on the innovation front, and I'm sure I'd call it innovation, but we're, we're looking to work with others as closely as we can uh, right around the world, taking uh, tips and learnings um, because everyone's going through something similar. I think what uh, I'm very focused on is ensuring as we're operating major critical infrastructure that we, uh, we maintain that continuity of supply and keep people, uh, keep people moving. I think 
We've seen for different reasons in the UK at the moment, um, uh, you know, what happens when you see an interruption to supply. Now that's driver availability fundamentally, but we need to make sure we maintain that, um, we maintain that supply. And that's where things like rapid antigen testing, um, as well as uh, for major facilities in particular, um, as well as vaccinations and other controls like social distancing. Um, we're, we're looking to find the right combination, if you like. So not so much innovation, but just finding that right combination that's worked for other, uh, that's worked in other situations. Beautiful. And would you have any tip? Like you just went through, well, we are, you are sort of going through a major rebranding. Is there any tip that you would like to share with any leaders listening to us today on how you can keep going with it? so much happening for your brand? Well, look, I, I think the, the rebranding is a huge opportunity for, for us. Uh, it's something very positive uh, within our business, uh, as well as in terms of our engagement with customers and, and the communities uh, that we operate in. You know, it's always important to not uh, sort of disappear into the negative too much, but to be able to re remain positive. And the rebrand for us is an opportunity to really reset our purpose, reset our strategy and be very positive about the role we can play uh, for our customers and communities. Now, people have found that really uplifting, notwithstanding that we've worked our way through some and continue to work our way through some difficult circumstances. So it's something we're really proud of. Another passion of yours is ESG. We hosted you not long ago on that topic. How is the focus on the ESG and your purpose transforming the company you lead? Well, look, it's very much, uh, it's very much at, the, at the core of our strategy, at the core of delivering on our purpose. Uh, and I think that's the number one uh, sort of, uh, that's the number one thing for me. It, it, it can't, ESG can't be something that's off to the side, clearly, you talk about carbon, but also other the other important elements of ESG. They're, they're so important to where we're going as a society, as a community, um, that they're very much at the heart of what the company has to be about and, and striving towards longer term. So they have to be at the heart of your strategy. So you know, powering better journeys today and tomorrow is, is our purpose um, that we reset um, during the course of last year. And again, this is something that the rebrand has enabled us to, to just go back and test you know, very much uh, our purpose. Uh, why are we here? What's the role that we're playing? How does our strategy connect from that? Um, and so powering better journeys today and tomorrow for us is about, you know, we play an important role in society today in, in uh, keeping people moving, getting economies moving, employment, all of those good things. But it's important that um, we also uh, play an important role in the future. So the tomorrow for us is about the energy transition, how we can make, how, how we as a, a company can make that happen in the most efficient way possible for our customers. Um, you know, we've committed to net zero uh, emissions by 2040, but also to spend a minimum of $100 million over the next five years on, you know, finding those low emission solutions for our customers, because that's, that's really what they're looking for. And we need to facilitate that orderly transition for them. Wow, that's really, that's amazing to hear and so impressive as well. Looking back into people and mental health is also at the core of your strategy. How do you keep your teams and partners healthy and motivated? Yeah, so it's a real, it's a real challenge. Um, uh, you know, I've also I found it challenging. Uh, and you see people, especially our, our office-based workers, who are who are in lockdown. Um, you know, it, it does uh, it, it can become a real grind. Um, so I think just finding ways to you know where. We're having staycation September at the moment, just to make sure people are still taking time out to spend with their family, to um, get get out of the, the work rhythm. The, the work rhythm can otherwise become all consuming and finding ways, you know, virtually everyone's doing something a little bit different, but finding ways, whether it's um, physical wellbeing, whether it's, um, you know, social activities, there's only so much you can do in the, in a lockdown environment, but we're really trying to make sure we're giving people um, uh, we're giving people the breaks they need and the diversity of social exposure that um, that I think we really need and we're all missing, um, which is why we need to get out of out of lockdowns. But it's a matter of through uh, a lockdown period how you can give people uh, exposure to as much of that as possible. Your brand being so widespread across well Australia but also New Zealand. Did you see any difference in response to the vaccine and how the communities have been responding to it? 
I, mean, I think uh, whenever something happens as quickly as it as it has done in terms of the vaccines, as I mentioned earlier, I think we're extremely fortunate that um, the scientists of the world have been able to develop the vaccines as quickly as they have. They've been tested um, uh, very rigorously. You know, there's there's a degree of uncertainty that has to break down over time. Um, and I think as we've seen outbreaks uh, through, uh, you know, the the Delta variant, which is very, very hard to control. You know, what worked last year is not working this year. It has, it has evolved. And I think we've seen that as that mindset has um, sort, of, uh, sort of developed, people are much more willing to get vaccinated. They can see that that's what, what's worked in other parts of the world. And, um, and so it's actually been, you know, very sad and tragic in, in many ways right around the world. But I think... Uh, the positive uh, read on it is it's forced us into a world where um, people are uh, are very willing to get vaccinated now, increasingly so, and that's a big positive for us to get people back and uh, and interacting with one another. And I completely agree with you. I think it's time for all of us to be together. And we have spoken with other organisations on the series about incentives. Do you think there should be more done to encourage people to get vaccinated? And are there any businesses you are looking at partnering with in introducing incentives for staffs and customers? Uh, so I think from, from all of the polling that you see and the, um, the data, people are, you know, the, the vaccine resistance, if you like, is getting much smaller, probably to get as far as we can. There is a role for incentives to play, whether it needs to be the government. Um, sometimes we look too much to governments to, um, to solve these sorts of issues for us, in my view. That's why as a company, you know, we're offering a $50 voucher for every one of our employees to get vaccinated. You know, we, we launched that a few weeks ago. We're over 2,000 and going up, going up rapidly. Um, so it's not a big number. Um, people that do appreciate it, though, and, uh, and it's just a little motivation out there for, um, for people to, to track and to see how we're going as, as an organisation to get our 8,500 people vaccinated. That's what we're aiming for. And we're strongly encouraging everyone within the business to, to make that happen. That's really encouraging as well. And looking at the numbers, we are almost to the 80%, so you're completely right. Moving on to you personally, how did the last 18 months change you? Uh, I think, uh, you know, I reflect on the, the, the lockdowns and all of the, uh, the uncertainty that people have worked through. I think uh, it's incredible how resilient, uh, how resilient uh, we all are. We can, we can manage and adapt to different circumstances, but at the same time, I reflect on uh, the impact on people and, and, and the importance of social interaction and people working together and maybe it's just having spent three months in lockdown now, but it's something that I very much, and I think a lot of us took for granted before, that I won't take for granted in the future. And there is absolutely a, an important role around the flexibility of virtual work going forward. Um, and that's fantastic, but it has to be balanced with how we bring people together because, uh, because that's how we deliver better outcomes, I think, um, through teams uh, working together. And so how we find that balance um, ultimately is, uh, is going to evolve, but I think that's one of the positives that will come out of, uh, that will come out of the pandemic. How will you approach that return to the office or return to work? How will you manage that with the teams? Yeah, so we give people the flexibility to find their own you know, find their own path, if you like, but but be encouraging people that we've got the right controls in place, we've got the right safety processes in place, and be encouraging people. We're about to move into a new office environment for our, um, our uh, headquarters employees, at least, and you know we're, we're really looking to design different ways of working that um, that. Uh, um, give rise to a, you know, a different working experience, a much more positive working experience that it doesn't mean you need to spend you know, five days a week in the office. It can be far more flexible um, than that, but equally that you know, you've got access to the technology, you've got access to the office, and you've got ways of working that still mean people are coming together, which is, uh, which is so important. And my last question for you, what are you personally most looking forward to as we ease restrictions in Australia? 
Uh, going on a holiday. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> um, I'm not sure where we're going. It's it's been incredible how uh, how fully booked uh, domestic sort of uh, holiday locations are. So the, the second thing I'm looking forward to is uh, uh, the travel restrictions coming off, border borders coming down, and uh, certainly getting over to New Zealand for a holiday is one of the first uh, one of the first thing that, things that's on my uh, my list of things to do. And I think you know people. It's one of the one of the issues through lockdowns is people don't take leave, uh, and for their own for your own well being, leave's important. And I, I you know I feel that, and uh, I'm looking forward to taking a holiday. Uh, definitely, I think we all look forward to a good holiday and at least to travel and see our dear ones again. Mostly Australia being so close but so far away between between states. So, well, thank you so much for being with us, and congratulations for all the work you do and keeping. On the forefront and getting everything moving in Australia and also in New Zealand. We really love your positive feeling and your positive notes. It has been really a pleasure to be with you today. And I will now hand over to Cassia for her last vote of thanks as it is her last day with a circle. Uh, thank you so much, Matt, again. I would look forward to welcome you again on the platform. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Soros. Thank you. On behalf of The Circle, thank you, Matt, for speaking for us today. And thank you, Cerise, for your excellent moderation. Matt, thank you for sharing not only your commitment to enabling your workforce to get vaccinated, but also your commitment to ESG purpose and staff well-being. I want to thank everyone at home for joining us. Throughout the Let's Get On With The Jab series, we have heard insights from top CEOs on the topic of the COVID-19 vaccination. We have more briefings to come in this series, including Andrew Abde from the NRL, which is tomorrow, Virginia Briggs from Minter Ellison, which is on Friday. And next week, we'll hear from the CEOs of Medibank, Cochlear and Bunnings. Our webinars are streamed live and recorded. The recordings can be found on our social channels. So feel free to take a look at any that you may have missed. Now I'll hand back to you, Matt, for the final word. Oh, look, thanks, Cassia. Thanks very much for having me. Look, uh, it's such an important message for people to get out there and get the jab. Uh, it is our pathway out of lockdowns. And I think for our, our well-being, uh, for our economies, uh, it's so important that that happens. So strongly encourage everyone out there to, uh, to make that happen. And uh, uh, yeah, I look forward to talking to you all, all again soon. Thanks for having me.